because they need to know what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to math class. Today we're talking about multiplying decimal numbers by decimal numbers. The first and most key factor when doing this, and, and I gave my students these two problems, so if you're watching at home, um, if you're absent or whatever and watching at home, write these two down, solve them, and then we'll come back, push pause, and then come back and watch this. But we're going to need this room here. So, Andrew, what is the first thing we're going to do when we multiply with decimal numbers? Estimate. Good. Andrew, so to estimate these, we're going to round them to the nearest whole number. So 16 and 3 tenths, you'd round to what, Andrew? 16. And 0 and 55 hundredths, you'd round to what, Andrew? 1. And Andrew, I'm going to ask you a really, 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 really tough question. Andrew, what is 16 times 1? 16. Andrew, why is it important for us to get an estimate? And we need to listen to what Andrew says because he knows. Good. Please keep your feet off that. Estimating is really important because it's going to give us an idea of the range of our answer. Because when we're multiplying with decimal points, it's real easy to put your decimal point in the wrong place in your product. So if you estimate, that's going to help you when placing your decimal point. Now you still need to do the, the arithmetic right. Macy, after I estimate, what am I going to do next? Um, do the real problem. I'm going to do the real problem, except I'm taking out the decimal points. And so I'm going to multiply it as if there are no decimal points in it. I'm going to multiply it as if there are no decimal points in it. So Macy, what's 5 times 3? 15. 15. I have 15 ones. Or 5 ones and 1 10. Macy, what's 5 times 6? 30. Plus the extra 10? 31. 31. Means I have 31 tens. Or 1 10 and 3 hundreds. Macy, what's 5 times 1 plus 3? 8. 8. Macy, what did I multiply to get 815? Um, 163 times 5. 163 times 5. That is what I multiplied to get 815. Thank you, Macy. You're a wonderful young lady. Dylan! If, if y'all at home could see Dylan's face when I call on her, because every time it's like... It always calls on her! That's like the first time in three days. So, Dylan. It happened yesterday. Oh, yeah. The day before that. I have one Give me five. Close your eyes. Quietly take a deep breath in and hold it. Don't let it out. Quietly take a deep breath in and hold it. We'll quietly let it out. Good. Now we're back to focus. All right, so Dylan, I have to multiply by my tens place here. So what do I need to do first? I need to put a zero in my ones place because I'm multiplying into my tens place. So what I'm doing here, Dylan, is multiplying 163 times 50. Now I already put my 0 from 50 there. So now I'm at the point where I'm multiplying 163 times 5. So can you tell me what 163 times 5 is, Dylan? <laughs> 163 times 5 is what we multiply together to get what? Okay, all right, we'll go through it. Dylan, what's five times three? Five times three. That's what I said, too. Okay, I'm going to need you all to be quiet. Fifteen. 
So put my five, I have 15 tens. So I have five tens, 100. What's five times six? Plus one. 31. And five times one? Plus three. Eight. Do we notice the difference? If I multiplied it by 5, it was 815. If I multiplied it by 50, it's 8150. All I have to do is the same thing I did here. Just put a zero in the ones place and move everything to the left, one place value. Now we're going to find the sum of these two products. Jacob M., help me out. 5 plus 0 is? 5. 1 plus 5 is? 6. 8 plus 1 is? 9. And 8 plus nothing else? 8. So these are the digits in my answer. I have an 8, a 9, a 6, and a 5. 8, 9, 6, 5. So, Jacob M., how many numbers are behind the decimal point in my problem? Three. Three. This three, this five, and this five. So there needs to be three behind it in my answer. So where's the decimal point in my product go? Uh, between the eight and the nine. Between the eight and the nine. Now that's as close to 16 as we can get. If I put it here, it's 89. Seems way crazy. If I put it here, it's 896. Way crazy. If I put it here, it's 8,965. Way crazy. So we don't want to do that. Let's look at the second one that I put up there for you. And it was 4 and 1 hundredth times 6 and 6 tenths. 4 and 1 hundredth times 6 and 6 tenths. <laughs> Carlos, what's my first step? Um, estimate, it. estimate it. Okay, we're going to round 4 and 1 hundredth to the nearest whole number and I get... Four. I'm around six and six tenths in the nearest whole number, and I'm going to get seven. seven. Carlos, what's four times seven? Twenty-eight. These should be on your paper where you estimated these. You have time. So my. Answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 28. Jonas, what is next? Uh, multiply, them. multiply them. Ignoring the... Decimal. Multiply them, ignoring the decimal points. So I have 401 multiplied by 66. This product is going to be 401 times 6. This product is going to be 401 times 60. Because 60 plus 6 is an expanded form of 66. Jonas, 6 times 1. I have 6 ones. 6 times 0. I have 0 tens. 6 times 4. 24. I have 24 hundreds or, one, or two thousands. And four hundredths. Good job. Thank you. Alyssa? Uh, there's something uh, you could do whenever you have the same numbers but different places, like ones and tens. Mm -hmm. You could just multiply them by one hundred and put them in place. Instead of uh, doing the whole equation again, you could uh, just add a zero. Yep. Exactly right. So, 401 times 6 is 2,406. So, now... Matilda, 401 times 60. Mm -hmm. 
If I multiplied it by 6, I got 2,406. So multiplying it by 60 is... Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 24,060. 24,060. Because as Alyssa said, it's just this with a zero at the end. That's all it is. That with a zero at the end. See, multiplying decimals also teaches multiplying whole numbers. That's why I'm teaching them together. Noah, are you with me writing all this stuff down? Awesome sauce. Matthew, help me find the sum of these two products. Six plus zero is? Six. Zero plus six is? Six. Four plus zero is? Four. Four plus two is? Six. Two plus nothing else is? Two. So my product, these are the digits in my product. Two, six, four, six, zero. Matthew, where am I placing my decimal point? Um, the 26, I mean the 6 and the 4. Good. Between the 6 and the 4. Why? Because there's one, two, three numbers behind my decimal point, and it's close to 28. Yes, you may go potty. Will is going to go tinkle, just for those watching at home. You don't have to pause it and wait for Will to return. He can tinkle without your help. We will be out. We will be back after this short ass. Boom! Shakalaka! Peace out! God bless! Love ya! Do something kind today!